This is Broadcast Beat Magazine with Ryan Salazar. Ryan Salazar here with Broadcast Beat Magazine. We have a very special guest, Scott Ross, uh, former CEO of Digital Domain. How you doing, sir? I'm good. How are you doing? Doing excellent. So it's certainly an honor to have you here at Broadcast Beat. Uh, I thought it would be a really neat thing to, uh, to talk about your career and the interesting things you've done. Uh, did a lot of research on you, and uh, it was very impressive. I was a concert chairman at Hofstra. Basically, what I wanted to be was I always wanted to be a rock star. Um, and I was in bands my entire li young life. And, uh, and then I kept having this recurring dream that I would wake up at the age of about 40 years old in a black shiny suit playing Havana Gila at bar mitzvahs. And at that point in time, I decided that was not going to be my life. So I changed direction, as they say now in 2015 uh, dialogue. I pivoted, and I, I pivoted towards sort of being a technical person. So I wound up being a sound engineer and toured with a bunch of bands and worked as an HBO sound engineer for a number of years, and then wound up in the um, mid to late 70s, yes, that's how old I really am. Most of you were not born at that time. Um, in the mid to late 70s, wound up working for a lot of people considered one of the seminal video post-production companies in the world, a place called One Pass Video in San Francisco. And there I was head of production and then was president and CEO of the company and helped build a 40-foot um, uh, semi 10 camera multiple VTR production vehicle with fly packs. We were the first people in the world that had fly packs that used to travel around. Um, and uh, it was funny, I did an ad once called Who Gives a Flying Truck? <laughs> and uh, Broadcast Magazine had some issues with it. And so I uh, ran that for a number of years and then was recruited in the mid 1980s by um, Industrial Light and Magic, the visual effects company and came to work at ILM in the mid to late 1980s and as it happened in most of the situations in my life wound up running it and was Industrial Light and Magic's general manager and was ILM's general manager at a point in time where the world as we know it was changing. We were moving from photochemical processes and optical printers to digital processes and transputer based computers and Pixar cubes etc. And because I had come from the video post environment. I was really, really comfortable with um, transputer-based and digital technologies. You know, Harry paint boxes, Quantels, ranks and tells, and the like. And so, helped ushered in with a small group of people: Dennis Murin, John Knoll, Scott Squires, Doug Kay, George Joblove. Um, the the new age of digital filmmaking and was there at the point in time when we put together our f scanning devices and our film recorders and worked closely with Kodak and Quantel and and then brought in Silicon Graphics and uh, the digital film revolution happened on my watch while I was at ILM and I did that for a number of years until the president of Lucasfilm and I uh, we had a religious difference he thought he was God and I didn't agree and um, and so we wound up separating our ways, and I wound up founding Digital Domain, and uh, then got a phone call from a client and friend of mine, James Cameron, who asked if he could be part of it. And then before I knew it, there was this guy named Stan Winston, and the three of us founded Digital Domain in, in the early part of 1993. I ran it for 13 years, multiple Academy Awards, multiple Academy Award nominations, very proud of what the men and women at Digital Domain did, and then sold it to a Floridian uh, by the name of John Texter in 2006. And that's uh, <laughs> my life. Digital domain, that had to be one hell of, a, uh, of an, an undertaking. I, I think you had some involvement in some pretty major movies, right? Yeah, um, several Academy Awards, um, Apollo 13, True Lies, uh, Benjamin Buttons, Titanic, um, over the years, I've probably have been associated with about a hundred of the largest grossing films of all time. And it looks like you've had a lot of brushes with, with quite a few celebrities, Bob Dylan and uh, to the Rolling Stones and Roy Orbison, all those guys. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's sort of like my wife calls me sort of the Forrest Gump of, of our generation. You know, how the hell did I get, you know, the Chauncey Gardner. You know, how did I get here and how did I meet these people? I really don't know, but... I've had um, the opportunity to be around and work with 
you know, both in the film industry and in the music industry, some of the greats of the 20th and 21st century. Scott, I noticed that you've lectured in over 30 countries in regards to content and technology, uh, the creative process. Uh, would you mind elaborating on that? Yeah. In, uh, you know, over the years, I've always, as a CEO, whether I was running Industrial Light and Magic and or Lucasfilm and then running Digital Domain, I think oftentimes as a CEO, part of the critical part of your job is to reach out to the rest of the world, tell the rest of the world what it is your company is doing and how you're doing it. And so over the years, I've probably been to 30 countries and and have had the opportunity to spend time with heads of state as well as kids on the street and have g given lectures at major universities and technical colleges and um, most of them are, revolve around the creative process, how to, how to motivate creative people and how to allow creative people to really stretch and give you their best and, and feel important and integral to the work that everyone's doing as well as um, technical issues and you know I, I'm sort of have one foot in Silicon Valley and and one foot in Hollywood so I've had the skills to be a um, master of none and um, sort of a, a knowledgeable at least about two and and I oftentimes act as a translator between the two the technos and the non technos you care a lot about arts and culture civil rights and social action um, especially science and technology um, which one is the biggest concern to you? Well, they're all sort of wrapped into one right now. You know, a lot of a lot of us, I believe, become who we are in as what we say in the formative years. And in my formative years, it was the late 1960s, early 1970s. And um, having been involved with the music scene and also being really deeply involved in social change and politics and counterculture, I still hold those values to be really close to my heart as to who I am and the way I think about the world. So I'm involved in lots of different things. One is, for example, a project called the Hidden Tears Project, which is a group of men and women that are trying to raise the awareness of um, children that are... Um, pulled into and kidnapped into slavery, mostly sexual trade. Um, and uh, that's an effort using media, and I think still media is the most powerful tool in the world, uh, using media to be able to inform people as to what's going on and to ask for their support. And ultimately, with their support, we, we're working with um, retired Navy SEAL team who goes in and extracts these kids out of um, harm's way. You've been in the industry a long time, and, and Man, you've seen a whole lot of change. Yeah, as I said, when I first when I first joined the television industry, the television industry was using two inch videotape, interestingly enough. <laughs> and then when we trans when I we transitioned to one inch, and then ultimately wound up getting involved in a group um, of nonlinear editing capabilities called a CMX six hundred, which lived on laser discs, um, and then. Uh, transitioning over to, to Industrial Light and Magic, who is still very much in the mid-1980s involved with photochemical process and optical printing, and then transitioning on into um, non-photochemical and digital-based technology, and then 3D cinema. And so I, I, I've, been, I've been lucky to have been alive and involved with high-level companies that were doing cutting-edge work. Um, and transitioning along with them, and sometimes leading that transition. Scott, it's been awesome having you on the show. Um, you're certainly a legendary guy with a lot of uh, a lot of experience behind you, and and I got to say, thank you so much for spending your time with us this afternoon at Broadcast Beat. You're welcome. Have a great one.